Hello Indie Game Pens, for some reason we have a massive week of releases, both small and large, so welcome to this supersized edition of Indie Gaming This Week. With this kind of art style, it is no wonder that many people have been comparing Forgone to Dead Cells, but this launches in 1.0 this week, and is an RPG action platformer which is not a roguelite. Rather, think of it more of Diablo but as a side-scroller, with loot, hordes of enemies and some great feeling combat. Time to put an end to this killing once and for all. You cannot stop destiny. Dabbled a little in early access and I'm excited to dive in. Living weapons, no more experiments. I'll end your suffering right here, right now. End it. A hidden gem this week is the heroic legend of Igaonia, a Chinese strategy game which looks pretty good, and despite the trailer, will have an English translation. Rather than battles being based on individual units like in Fire Emblem, you are instead commanding entire squads of troops in grander scale combat. It has a fantasy setting, so orcs, undead, elves, and so on, but all having that anime aesthetic. You need to practice every day, so when the time comes, you will be ready. Trees don't hit back, but your enemies do. They won't spare you, young Chen. A man is responsible for his family. And when I'm gone, you will need to protect our village. Protect them with your life. I love beat em ups, and the long anticipated Nine Monkeys of Shaolin finally makes it to launch. Play as a fisherman who has to avenge the death of his friends and family after his village was destroyed by pirates in what looks to be some stylish combat. We do have quite a number of bigger games this week, chief of which is Second Extinction. This is a co-op FPS where dinosaurs are once again threatening the earth, so team up and cause the Second Extinction. This has been described as Destiny crossed with Left 4 Dead and dinosaurs, so of course I'm in. However, putting aside the fact that it's a game, to get dinos back only for humans to immediately start shooting at them is kind of a sad state of affairs, but it does look good and kind of looks like a modern Turok, so why not? I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but RuneScape of all things is launching on Steam in 2020. This is not the original browser game which released back in 2001, which of course was a part of my childhood, but rather has fancier graphics at the very least. I'm not sure how much has changed with the game in the 20 years or so since launch, but a curiosity indeed. Microsoft's expansion on PC and Steam continues with Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition, the remastered version of another RTS classic. I was a bigger fan of 2 myself, but I'm interested to see what they do with this, 
and for giving fans what they want, this gets a spot. Some of you may not realise this, but Jackbox Games is a good sized studio that makes these party games, and the Jackbox Party Pack 7 is the latest entry. Featuring 5 new games, including Quiplash 3, The Devils and the Details, Champed Up, Talking Points and Bled Around, adding more into an already impressive array of party games. And finally, the action RPG Torchlight 3 makes it to 1.0, launching on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, with a Switch version to come soon. The follow-up to one of the most beloved action RPG series of all time, this has been sitting at mixed reviews on Steam, not least of which was due to server problems at launch. The development of this has been strange, starting life as an MMO, Torchlight Frontiers, changing developers, publishers, owners, and so on, so we'll have to see on the quality of this. The Souls-like Metroidvania Biomass made my list of the best upcoming indie games of October, and here we get a little bit more of a look at the impact of the choices that you make. The animation of the pixel art looks good in this, with what looks to be challenging combat and a very cool setting. I've been looking forward to Lucifer Within Us since you play as a digital exorcist and can see into alternate timelines and have to solve murders, purify the possessed, and purge their demons. If that isn't an intriguing setup, I don't know what to say, and given that it's from developer Kid Fox Games, I have confidence in this. An awesome looking Metroidvania that I could not fit into the best of the month list is Bad Barian, Testament of the Primordials, where you explore hundreds of rooms playing as a magic hating barbarian with a bat companion. There are new skills and elemental ability unlocks, 400 plus rooms, 10 plus bosses, a level up minigame and so on, so as a fan of the genre, I have to check this one out. Alright, buckle up for the smaller games, ports and demos of the week, since there are a whopping 40 entries, beginning with the very indie 10MG. This is a 10 game collection, each sold separately, of 10 minute games that are all unified under a single banner, so more weird experimental titles like this, please. It wasn't even an affair? How does that work? Such a soft and round kitten. You were just so soft and round. 
you were such a soft and round kitten, but let's have a lot of fun in the world. If, for some sick reason, you are missing the experience of sitting on a plane, then airplane mode will give you that exact experience, down to the PA system interrupting your movie, crying babies, meal service and more, and it's a very 2020 experience. We'd like to remind passengers to remain seated with their seatbelts fastened whenever the seatbelt sign is illuminated, and generally whenever seated. The first zany local multiplayer sports game this week is Alpaca Ball All-Stars, naturally starring our furry friends and simply looks fun. The original Equinox was released in 2001 by THQ, with Equinox Deep Descent being the latest iteration. Now that THQ Nordic has bought over and somehow transformed into some version of old THQ, this IP went along with that and is in the hands of a new developer, hoping to bring that 6 degrees of freedom shooter to a new age. Arcade is a neon bullet hell shooter which looks good, but there's also a cautionary tale on how not to name your game. The developer of Boris the Rocket did reach out to me, and I have to hand it to them for creating a strange first person simulator where you play as a Soviet nuclear missile operator during the Cold War. It falls more on the comedic side of things and may be of interest. Just covered Cake Bash when talking about the Steam Game Festival, and here we are with the launch. An adorable party game, I love the theme, and it should be fun with friends.
Apocalypse makes the launch on Steam after being an Epic exclusive and is a pretty decent offline collectible card game named after the in-universe Mega Mutant Power Pets cartoon and gives me some similar vibes to how it was in school with the Pokemon trading card game. Cats Organized Neatly is just a cute and well-made puzzle game about rotating and fitting cats of various shapes into grids, so nothing new but it's really cute. The Neon Noir narrative game set in a vertical cyberpunk city, Clockpunk, gets console ports to all major platforms, so if you were itching to play this gorgeous game originally released in April, which has over 3,700 Steam reviews and a rating of very positive, now's your chance. We need you to pick up a package from Kimberly Heights. It's a residential zone. I'm sending a nav point now. Don't open it, don't ask me about it, and don't be late. Control, come in. Come in, this is important. Contraband Police Prologue is the demo of an interesting intersection of a first-person sim like House Slipper and Papers, Please, where you play as the border police and must inspect vehicles for contraband, opening tires and barrels, and even arresting those who get caught. Seems like an interesting idea, so do check the demo out. Alright chef, I know it's a bummer your restaurant exploded, but here's an idea. You could turn our truck into a food truck. I know you'd probably rather open up another restaurant, but these days it's best to stay on the move. I won't lie to you, we'll be fired upon, hacked, and maybe even run off the road. But hey, that's just the cost of doing business. The fun time management game Cook Serves Delicious 3 launches in 1.0 after about 10 months in early access and has you cooking and preparing various dishes in your food truck to satisfy your customers. I love how the food looks in this, which may give you some inspiration on what to eat next, with a very interesting post-apocalyptic world setting which is worth checking out. Cause things just stay the same anymore in this So what do you say, chef? Are you ready to get cooking? Crafting, setting up shops, selling items, mastering recipes, managing employees, feeding a tentacle monster, and joining a cult? Sure, that's all in a day's work. Chef, alchemist, blacksmith, choose your profession, buy your ingredients, and learn how to craft items that will sell like hotcakes. If you love crafting and shopkeeping games, Craftland's workshop will be of interest where you run the store, manage three different disciplines of crafting, and have to find out what happened to the former owner. 
there seems to be some sort of mystical or eldritch shenanigans going on, so a nice combination of the two, giving me some little big workshop vibes. You have an entire floating world to explore. Feed a tentacle monster, join a cult, master all three noble crafts, and open a magical portal to an unknown realm. Yeah, they don't put those on the application form, do they? I spent quite a bit of time with Crystal Caves when I was a kid under the early shareware model, so to see the HD remaster warms my heart. Developer Shot X Studio has been making a series of smaller, interesting roguelites, and their next entry is the roguelite platformer Dungeons of Clay, which looks like it has potential. Go to one of my all time favorite platformers, Electronic Super Joy 2 makes the launch on Switch, but rather than being free as per the Steam version, this looks like it bundles together all the DLC into one complete paid version. Epixinium has been popping up time and again ever since I started covering indie games, and here we are with the release. This is a turn-based strategy game where nature is a finite resource and looks to have an important message to tell. Developer Cotton Game is known for their wonderful adventure games, with ISO Land The Amusement Park being the latest entry to be brought to Steam.
The revolution, anarchy or riot simulator looks to be an increasingly popular theme, which is not surprising considering the states of global affairs and Mesmer looks like a well-made one of these with Pikmin style strategy, adventure game conversations, third-person exploration and narrative choices. The pixel art block light platformer Noita makes it to 1.0 and impressed me with the physics simulation of every pixel while it was in early access. The other wacky sports title this week is Nonsense Soccer, which has nice pixel art and is not just limited to football. Out of Reach Treasure Royale was successfully kickstarted for their final push and is releasing this week. This is a pirate themed battle royale game with a crew of 4 and thus look to enter quite a crowded genre. An interesting looking low poly strategy game is Parabellum, where you assign squads of units to a formation and simply watch them go, looking to be quite a cool experience. Pretty excited for Partisans 1941, 
since this is a real-time tactics game with stealth elements in line with commandos and has you leading a group of guerrillas waging warfare behind enemy lines set on the eastern front of World War II. There was a neat arcade puzzler last week and we too get one of these this week with Petal Crash. It looks more complex than the simple swapping or rotating of tiles with a cameo appearance or two that I hope you picked up on. This is from the developer of Grapple Force Rena and being published by Galaxy Trail, makers of Freedom Planet, so there's certainly some weight behind this. I absolutely fell in love with the look of Prodigal the moment I saw it, since this is a retro adventure puzzler where you use tools to explore the island and to solve puzzles in order to progress. Much less of a combat element as compared to Zelda, which is precisely what makes it a nice change of pace with the awesome pixel art style as well. The Indian made Raji an ancient epic makes its way to Steam and non-Switch consoles about a month after its launch on Switch, and is a gorgeous looking action adventure game of a young girl chosen by the gods to stand against demons, having to rescue her brother and to stop the demon lord. We turn One Way Trip as a spooky horror game that is perfect for the season, set on board a seemingly abandoned train which of course is filled with all sorts of spirits. Red Wings Aces of the Sky launches on Steam and is an aerial combat game with a nice looking art style.
Please come in, Miss Reed. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Ashman. Do you remember me? Only between old friends. <laughs> I'm Jennifer, by the way. Lindsay? But call me Lynn. Remothered Broken Porcelain is the follow-up to Tormented Fathers, released in 2018, and is a horror game with an antagonist that stalks you, so another one for spooky season. Where are you? Show yourself! With the axe! What have you done to her? Do it, Mr. Ashman. Of course I will. Remember when I talked about Uprising and Revolution? Well, Revolution The Spark is a turn-based tactics game where you gather your allies and fight against the corrupt nobles and to help the citizens who are being oppressed, so sharpen those guillotines and fight the good fight. The spark ignites. It's when. Will you fight with the odds against you? Or try to win the hearts of your enemies. Who will fight at my side? As the Empire crumbles from within. Who's willing to die there? But beware. in the shadows of the palace. Nothing is as it seems. Roki launches on Switch and is another superbly well-received adventure game that is not to be missed. Phasmids have been causing trouble in our peaceful little corner of space, but not any longer. Gina, let's go full Abrams with the flares. Enlist today to embark on an epic space adventure and do your part. Space Crew is a roguelite management action game about piloting a spacecraft and fighting enemies, having your crew members attend to the most urgent task in a manner similar to FTL Faster Than Light. Seek out new life. And make new friends along. And make new friends. And make new friends. This is the follow-up to Bomber Crew from 2017 and looks to expand upon the systems in that. Join the space crew.
I've mentioned Suit's absolute power a number of months ago, but its launch was delayed to this week. And as a monochrome, turn-based RPG that looks cool, where you fight against the corporate machine quite literally. Tears of Avia was initially slated for September 24th but got delayed and I've been looking forward to this tactics RPG which looks good. Terror Squid is an arcade action game where the trail of bullets that you leave behind may just come back to bite you in the butt. I like the slick aesthetics and it should scratch that super hexagon itch. My colleagues and I didn't think there would ever be an actual bridge. Who would have thought that a concept such as the unconscious could ever be seen so clearly through the lens of neuroscience? You wouldn't believe how fascinating this is. The Signifier is an impressive looking first person adventure game that delves into psychological aspects with trippy visuals and a story to tell. was found dead in her apartment this morning. While the police say that everything indicates suicide, they are not ruling out other options until an investigation is made. This is a very high profile death that has shaken the technology world. This is the Zodiac Speaking is a first-person stealth detective game based on the infamous Zodiac Killer where you play as a journalist investigating this very case.
Vectral Mirror is a first-person platformer that looks interesting and did release a free prologue which was well received. Rounding off the smaller games is Werewolf the Apocalypse Heart of the Forest, a visual novel RPG based on the World of Darkness franchise and has very good art and those tabletop RPG mechanics translated very nicely into video game form. Alright, a couple more bangers to round off the video, starting with the long, long in development roguelike Crown Trick. This is your standard grid-based turn-based game with permadeath and procedural generation and looks well made with awesome art and what looks like interesting elemental systems. Likes are all about exploration and figuring out how these systems interact with each other, which looks to be ample here, and should be great based on early previews and videos on the demo. Darkness breeds a curse disdained, it's time to enter the Ring of Pain! A newfound friend is guiding you in dungeons that you're crawling through. A place in protest rushing out, fueled by fear, delusion, doubt. The ring adjusts with every action. Choices cause a chain reaction. The fantastic looking, not stay the spire like, look like deck builder, Ring of Pain, is a game which I'm very excited about, looking to add something new to the genre with that wicked art style. On top of that, the trailers and writing so far seems to be mainly done in rhyme, which adds a little Alice in Wonderland flair to this creepy card game, very appropriate for the season and should be excellent. Observe the ring and strategize. Learn, adapt, or face demise. <laughs> I have a gift on one condition. Quench the thirst. It's your audition. I'm actually surprised that it took that long for Kingdom Rush Vengeance to flip the series on its head, where you're now playing as the Dark Wizard and have to command monsters and minions to cause havoc and destruction on the land. I love the various Kingdom Rush entries over the years, and while I did fall off a little, I'm glad to see this series still being made and could use a great tower defense scheme right about now. Do note that this is the Steam release, with prior versions being available on mobile, but given the pedigree, I'm still excited for it. They used to say, Day will always vanquish the night. But most of us have lost hope. And finally, Vigil the Longest Night takes the number one spot since this Taiwanese Souls-like Metroidvania has been another title which I've been looking forward to, giving me some vibes of Salt and Sanctuary, but not exactly since you're playing as one main character. Orbit inflicted by the creatures of the night. My steel will strike onto thee. Not once, nor twice, but three times without number. I will find my sister, free May from the darkness, and forever end this world from the longest night. Your time draws near, my dear. You care for these people. There are, however, multiple weapons and complex skill trees to allow for customization, 
with the unique mixture of Lovecraftian horror and Taiwanese legends. Missed such horrors. your rightful place in a higher existence. Spill the blood of these terrors, for you must become the bedrock of the goddess's return. Very excited since I'm a fan of Metroidvanias, so this takes the number one spot. <laughs> to see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after May the jump. sacrifice not be too much to bear.